some stories that are told by the fire, they tend to warm the heart. Some make it ache. This story tells of a tale of adventurers willing to band together to topple the mightiest of foes and tribulations that lie ahead of them. These adventures are rare by nature indeed. Kodo, a cobalt cleric of the twilight, seeks to help those find refuge in towns while keeping his own home safe. Vlad, a dampier rogue who lost a loved mother, killed by his own father due to his mistakes he made, is now seeking a new beginning. Perrin Lydon, a wood elf ranger who seeks the safety of the forest above all, who has aligned himself with a secret group known as the Silver Quills. Adwater, a tortle fighter who seeks a brawl regardless the time of day. Mountain wins as a champion of the arena, wishing anyone to take his request to fight. Fuck this, a dragonborn paladin, a white knight by nature, but with his decisions made throughout his life has brought him to where he is today, questioning whether he has done right or wrong. These are our heroes in this tale of Chapters of Capula. Our story starts in a land where by the year, resources are stopping and the land seems to be dying, causing the main surface below the clouds to become inhabitable due to many years of discolored rain, snow, and many other weather events in this region since the sky calamity of the great bursting star. With growing populations and little left, civilization was forced up towards the sky by some magic means that no one knows large mountain plateaus were formed like ledges to be climbed going upwards towards the sky at an angle thousands of feet up with habitable land filled with resources laying high above the clouds here is where refugees and new life have taken place to rebuild and to restart in the current year, 75 ASC, in a mountainous region where four major, major regions lay above the clouds and mist, all that is known is that these regions currently hold humanity and civilization within this area. These regions called Geome, Hexwell, Rocks, and Audre are all separated by small airships that fly constantly looking and searching through the clouds of mist for new regions in the land. Supplies are few and anything of value and riches seem to go a long way. Many of the region's leaders will do anything to put their region ahead of the others. Within the region of Geome lies a town named Alron, a newly discovered town in a newly discovered region among the mist. It was found here about year 73 ASC, after the sky calamity. Now, Geome sits high above a large mountain, like the other regions, surrounded by clouds and mists hundreds of feet beneath. A very rich and lucrative place upon its founding with many gems and riches found beneath its crust and inside its soils were great minerals some so great that they held powers and abilities that no man could explain. 
A story now circulates Geom with many new travelers telling of many tales and fables, but one story kept coming up about how a certain gem that was once fabled is not so fabled at all. Everyone knows the legend of the land changing after the calamity of the sky, that the land and those on it forever were changed. While new regions with many different riches might lay beyond the clouds and mist waiting to be discovered, Geom is an infant in comparison to the three other regions. All of the other regions have been around since about 2 ASC, shortly after the event within the sky. Now it seems a tale of a gem possibly being located in Geom stars, stirs the community of Alron and those within the region. Finding the gem supposedly ensures the life of anything an adventurer could ever want. This mystery is within the air and wet on many lips within taverns that speak news of a new tunnel that was found beneath the dirt and a new entryway that lies beneath the dirt with an emblem of a large gemstone in the shape of what looks like a creature bearing wings what lies beyond this entry point remains a mystery a small airship with a bright golden banner with an r in the middle makes its way to a port dock as there's signs of snow coming you hear a portman yell tight on the corner bring her in and we'll unload them here these are the new arrivals. Make sure to be careful. Most of them have never flown before. They could be sick from living down on the surface for so long. The cargo of this airship has lived on the mainland and since has left. And under the cloud has entered these new cities and regions. They have abandoned the mainland due to these conditions being too inhabitable. And now they enter Geom. These new arrivals and refugees seeking this new land. As this airship comes to a stop as it gracefully heads towards the dock, you see a guard shouting names with a pen and parchment. As he starts... An ordinary members of the ship stand ready to exit. And now, let's do some introductions. All right. Ooh, alrighty. So, Cody, you're up first. Let me grab your token. So, first up, you see a man, a guard at the front. He looks down. Add water! As you start to step off, you see a guard at the edge. He stands ready. Are you at water? As he says in common. Yeah, man. Alright. Please sign here and you may enter Auron. He hands you a piece of parchment. Do you sign it? Um, he doesn't actually know how to write, but he tries his best with it. He looks up at you as you mark all over the paper, smudging where many other signatures could have gone. Um, all <laughs> right then. Well, um, if you'll just give me back my pen, kind of jerks it back from you. Well, have a good, good trip. Um, he looks down. I just give him a little wave. I'm like, Thanks, is there man. any, is there anything you want to say about your character? Uh, he, he loves the fight. All right. He loves the fight. All right, too. You can move your token down the, down the bridge if you wish to. All right. Number two. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Wherever you want to do it, it's your character. All right, Kodo, you're up. As you see the man look down. K Kodo! Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, 
you're next here. It says that, uh, is, you, you have family? No, no, no family. Um, yeah, you, you I just need your signature. As he kind of steps up, hands you a piece of paper. Just basically make sure you don't cause any trouble in the city, all right? Mm, not planning on it. Takes the paper back. Uh, well, I don't want to be seeing you again. Yeah. Uh, where's your boss at? Um, I mean, my boss, well, and he kind of looks down south towards the gate. Those two down there, mining the head station near the gateway, those would technically both be my senior captains. Why? Ah, uh, I'm here on business. I'm looking for whoever's in charge, essentially, of the settlement. Well, if you're looking to know who's in charge, you're gonna have to speak with... Oh, what was his fucking name? He's new here. We... We're quite new here in Geome, but yep. we run under democracy, you'll see. But uh, I'm pretty sure the Pekka, he goes by name Rovin. Rovin Tanner, I'm pretty sure. He's, he's kind of like the stand-in leader for now. You can, it's about a ten-minute jaunt to Alron, the center of the city. You can ask another god in town, I'm sure he can steer you there. Thanks for the info. Mm -hmm. Looks down at his paper. Here we go. Alright, Vlad. <clears throat> Alright, so. Walking up, you see what looks to be a quite odd fella for this area. Alright. Introduce your man, if you would like to, Wade. As the guard says, uh, Vlad... Is it Vladimir or Vlad? Whoops. Just Vlad. As you zip back. All right. Well, um, as I said to the last one, just no trouble, no nothing. Here you are. And make sure you turn that thing back in the, you know, new ages called CRISPR on, please. It's on here. It is on. <laughs> That's weird. Um, yeah, I just sign it. And then I just kind of like, I'm just gonna go catch up with the kobold. What? Because he feels because he 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 looks like he knows where he's going. Before you leave, what? How did you get that look about you? I don't know what you mean. Oh, uh, no, nothing, nothing. He kind of steps <laughs> back, looks Wait, back yeah, down at his my paper. pale complexion. He just uh, yeah, yeah, he just goes back to his paper. He kind of his hands. Somewhat seemed to be startled, un, you know, completely understanding he may have crossed the line there. He looks back down at the paper. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, uh, a uh, Mr. Well, I'm not sure. Is it Pe Perrin? Liar? Lydon? Perrin Lydon? Perrin Lydon, sir. Thank you very much. Get mm. it right next time. Mm, I, I see. As you step forward. Well, let's sign here. You you know what I'm going to get at. Welcome to Alron. Here's Geome. I just no trouble. It's the wrong one. Ex ex excuse me. No, 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 the token. The token's the wrong one. It's just Jay. Uh, um. I mean, I mean, um. <laughs> uh, that, not you. So sit the fuck back down. <laughs> yes. Excuse me. Yeah, you're next. I said Perrin. <laughs> oh, God. So, you, sir, sign here. That peck of face was trying to sign for your name. Oh, some people can be so rude sometimes. Yes, uh, uh, have the paper here, sir. Understood. So, I wouldn't expect a wood elf like yourself any trouble, so good day to you. Now, <clears throat> what... What in the fuck is this slobber mess of a name wrote on my paper here? It's, I'm not even going to try and say this as you've already stepped up once as he looks at you, Perrin. <laughs> sir, can you get off my my boarding bridge, sir? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, thank you. <laughs> now, yes, Mr. Whatever your name is. 
sign All right. whatever your fucking name is here. <laughs> Why am I signing this? This is to ensure that upon enter of Geo and Alron, that you are going to abide by our rules and regulations and understand that we rule as a democracy. And if you break any such rules or regulations, you will not be hung like you are in the other regions. Ah, do I need to keep going? That's fine. You have rights here. Know that if you go anywhere else, as I can see you are new, you do not have rights. Here, as this is a new found place, until rule or anything such of it comes, it lies as a democracy. So, if you cause trouble, know that if enough of us see you, we can fucking hang you. <laughs> or if, okay. you know, we just don't like... No, I'm just kidding. No, we, we don't rule that <laughs> way, but... Yeah, enjoy your stay at Alron. All right, one now, second. Yes. I'm going to, so my dude's going to look down at the paper. He's going to close his eyes and just look up in the sky for like 10 seconds. And, as you and then he's so, going to sign it and hand it over. <laughs> <laughs> as you do so, he kind of just taps his toe wondering what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't want to interrupt you, understanding that he kind of overstepped with Vlad, and he just kind of waits, just like. <laughs> now, he goes on barking names as you all start making your way down what looks to be an entry point towards this new city above the mist and clouds. As you see this airship, one that you have only seen very few of, make your way as it starts departing. You hear it almost back off right before the guards in front of you start yelling out, Yes! This way! Come on now, make it this way! I don't have all day. You've been checked in. Let's get you in before night time. You notice that as you look around, the setting around you, it is very thin air. Um, You notice that it almost kind of catches like the edges of your lungs as you breathe it in. Um, the tops of this elevation is new to all of you. Um, as you make your way up, you realize that this elevation is beyond all of your guys' you know, reach. As it catches part of you know, this new elevation, you see that no banners hang in this town. Um, as you start approaching, this town seems to be in a building state. You see piles of bricks um, lying around, mortar... A uh, little team starting to build walls and establishing what looks to be a newly built city. As you start approaching the gate, you see two guards as they step forward. One makes his way. So, welcome to Alron. Make sure that you do not cause any trouble, and if I can help guide you in any way, please let me know. As the first guard steps forward. Um, Edwada steps forward and goes... Yeah, man, where's the where's the arena at? The arena? Well, if you wish to, well, have a good old fight, you may want to go speak to uh, Corgren. He's the barkeeper. That's down at the good old Ruby Ricker. That's the tavern around here. You get a good old drink, ask around. Sure, you could get in a good old fight if you really wanted to. Cool, cool, cool. Thanks. No problem. Now, if anybody else has any questions, let us know, and uh, we'll either guide you there, or I can have one of the junior officers lead you on your way. Uh, go ahead and grab my guy if you can, Connor, because I cannot see him at the moment. Um, I got you. And uh, just follow me forward a little bit, fit, and it's just like, um, and I uh, just say like, uh, just point me to the nearest tavern, sir. That's all I seek right now. Yes, well. I'll walk you there, the Ruby Ricker. I'm about to. He looks at the other guard. It's about time for my shift, and uh, we'll just swap out here in a minute anyway. I'll get Ivan, and he can take over. I'll lead these new founders down and uh, help these refugees figure out their way. He kind of motions you all, and do you guys follow? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah, sure. You guys follow this guard. 
And after about a 10 minute stroll, make your way to what looks to be a small little city that starts to be developing. I will move you so one moment. As you guys Damn, walk, <laughs> as you guys walk, you notice that this city is very new. Um, the establishment of it seems to be an almost brand new build. Most of these walls and establishments are in pristine condition, newly found. And as you look upon them, you see that most of the buildings are filled with brand new refugees just like yourselves, coming from the mainland. And it looks as if all run as just by a basic perception that most of its inhabitants are those that came from the mainland, much unlike most of the other regions who have for the most part had generations almost now bred here and are establishing life. As you guys look around the guard. So if you guys want to get to drink, you guys can head right in here as he points towards this doorway. Now, if you go in, you're going to want to speak to the barkeep, Corgren. Since y'all are new, I'd just say, make sure you tip him and be nice. He can be quite an angry motherfucker, if you know what I mean. He starts turning to walk away. Oh, and one more thing. I don't know if you've heard any of the tales going around town, but... If anybody tries to swindle you with this story of a gem or tries to take you out into the desert, just be wary. That's all I have to say. Oddly specific, I must say. Well, <clears throat> hey man, it could be a pretty nice fight to have to know that. I'm just gonna let you know that recently that, well... Whatever that excavation the miners found they've been working on has drawn a lot of attention. And I don't know why you've come to Alron. I don't know why you are here. I mean, if you want to know, man, I can tell you. I don't. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> that's that's kind of rude, man. I mean, buy me a drink later. or me Come on, buy me a drink right now, then. And he kind of motions into the bar. Three gold, is that enough? I mean, yeah. But at least you and me. And he All goes right, ahead it, and man. just... Let's go. Yeah, he just makes his way into the bar. Alright, Cody's getting drunk right off the bat. Fantastic. Hell yeah, baby. <laughs> Alright, so Hopefully you make your way get in. smited. <laughs> what? Oh yeah. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Where... Where are our characters now, Connor? I'm I'm gonna move you. I'm, what are you guys doing? You guys all moving in? Um, hey. Or do you guys? I mean, if you guys want to go do something else, you can. If you guys will split up, that's up to you guys. Uh, I'm gonna go into the tavern. All right, you're going into the tavern. Yeah, uh, yeah. Drinks tonight sound fun. I'll Might do as well. In the morning. All right, you guys all going into the tavern. I, I just think to myself as I'm going to the tavern, like, this would be a wonderful way to get information. All right, I'm moving everybody into the tavern. If you guys got an Woo! issue with it, let me know. Away! <laughs> right. Uno momento. All oh, right. I, Connor, question real quick. What uh, up? Just, uh, uh, how, long, how long are we going on a session tonight? Uh, print like seven thirty ish. Seven thirty. Okay, that's all I was wanting to know. Thank you. Yep. All right. Now, as you guys enter, you see a small, um, I'd say, kind of tightly knit bar, and you notice that behind the desk there is a man that sits on a small stool. As he does so, you see this. As you pull the door open. Now I'm not going to flood it with a million tokens. But here's where we are. Now. 
as you guys enter, you notice that behind the bar, there is a dwarf. He stands oh. there as he motions, as he sees the guard approaching. The guard... <laughs> Hey, you know what time it is, Rovan. He starts slapping hands with some sort of man behind the counter as he starts walking out from behind it. You start seeing another gentleman take his place as it looks as if he knows him. He steps out. Yes, so you have ended your duty early today, I see. What? I mean, <clears throat> uh, the wall's being looked after. I figured I would show these newcomers, as he points back to you guys. I wanted to show them your bar. Well, <clears throat> you brought them to the right place, then. As he kind of gets back behind. What will it be if you've come here to spend some coin? I'm sorry, I said his name wrong. It is not Rovan, it is Kor Grun. Kor Grun? Yeah, I am sorry. That is my bad. Um, I noticed. Edwada steps forward and he bows gr very respectfully from to the dwarf because in his experience, dwarves are pretty, pretty great fighters. So he goes, I would like to have your strongest drink, my man. Mm, strongest drink, eh? Well... Kind of jimmies around underneath. I mean, do you need anything cold in it, or do you just want it straight? Straight, my man. Well, I got about half a bottle left. It'll be... I can give you two little cups of it, almost shot sizes, for about a gold and a half. Okay, sure, deal. All right, he starts pouring them out on the table. Definitely has some dirty glasses. Um, gives them to you. All right, next, who it'll be? The guard kind of looks at you as he makes his way around, assuming that those are to be shared, one with him. As he looks on to the rest of the group. Now, as you guys look upon inside of this, you see at least one group of people at... Um, this table to the south um just a group of people just enjoying drinks two or three people sitting at the table you notice that they kind of aren't being loud or anything just kind of minding their own business though it looks as if they've enjoyed a long hard day of working what looks to be at the mines you notice that they are covered in what is like a reddish soot dust head to toe goggles with pickaxes kind of hunched up on the side of the wall as they look up noticing your arrival they see an odd group of newcomers they kind of put their eyes back down so what will it be any other drinks uh this is when i walk up to the here i will have my own little corner here and i'll say uh fi finest thing you got what well, finest thing flight. I got. You guys all want my finest drink. <clears throat> what? He kind of looks around. Uh, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to get a new bottle. He looks at the bottle and he pours out. What? Do you want one or two? One would be fine. Thank you. 75 silver. And he starts pouring it out. So, what brings you to town? Uh. Silver Quill Business. I don't know if you heard of our organization or not. Probably not. But if you do, you do. I I haven't, as he starts looking towards Fuckdis. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what up? Uh, Why are okay. you guys Oof. laughing? What's so funny? <clears throat> I'm trying to keep character here. <clears throat> Got that name. Did I miss a joke? Uh, fuck. Fuck what? Yeah, yeah, you did. The the big dragon. So I'm I'm the little dragon. He's a big dragon. His name's his name's fuck this. Like uh, fuck this. It's, it's uh, a joke. Yeah. He kind of looks name. at him and then looks back at you. Like that's his. That's your name. That's kind of. Sure is. That's kind of cool, I guess. If 
I mean, are you gonna buy a drink, fuck this? I may. Well, uh, he kind of puts his good bottle away and starts grabbing a different bottle off the little cabinet behind him. May I offer you something, uh, else that I have? Uh, possibly something darker, maybe lighter what, uh, on your tongue. What are those, what are those miners over there drinking? Well, they're actually just, just drinking what I call spice rum. It's, uh... Very heavy alcoholic beverage kind of numbs the body in about, uh, well, well, ten minutes. It's not necessarily um, something that you should drink if you have activities for the day, if I were to say. <laughs> Out of character. You said there were three people over there? Yeah. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll plop okay. them down over here. Uh, all right, sir. I'll take uh, three of those spice rum, please. And he starts pouring them out. That'll be 75 silver, sir. Alrighty, here you go. He takes it. Alright. Anybody else, anything while I'm getting this arthritis from pouring these fucking drinks? Yeah, man. Um, Would you be willing to spar with me? He kind of looks you up and down. No, actually. Um, He looks at the guard standing right next to you. <laughs> I would not, but, uh, if you're looking for something, there's, there's a job board in the center of town. Oh, really? Uh, that yes, as, really. As, as he takes a little, little sip of his drink. There's a, uh... A sip of his shot. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of <laughs> eyes, yeah, he kind of <laughs> eyes you up and down. Um, yeah, there's... There's a board. You can, you can check it out, over, over in town. Quite. Do you know if there's anything super dangerous on that board? Well, most of the jobs that haven't been taken, those are probably the ones you fucking want, because oh boy, those oh are the ones that are probably pretty dangerous. Um. Eduardo just rubs his hands together and goes, oh boy, oh boy, here I go kill him again. Well, uh, I mean, some of them aren't just for killing. Some uh, maybe for saving, you know, maybe helping <laughs> I... a man, you know, get his lawn cut. I mean, they're not all just, you know, killing people. Like, that's not the world entirely, but okay. <laughs> and Wad just sh shrugs his shoulders and he goes starts just gazing the that. other way completely ignoring the words that are coming out of your mouth being like this guy is kind of fucking crazy <laughs> he just kind of starts looking back at Parrot in the guard and kind of rolls his finger <laughs> next to his ear like dude I, I, whispered to the, I whispered to the guy like, you might want to keep an eye on him I mean I'm going to keep a distance and an eye but, uh, so, uh, are you guys all traveling together, or are you guys here seeking, what, uh, gems and rubies, I, I assume, like every miner here? You guys are miners? Well, I don't see any pickaxes. What's the deal? No. Not in the slightest. Uh, uh, uh personal business of, uh, my own accord. I see. So, you you need to meet up with... Maybe representatives, maybe other refugees that came here from your know, civil, silver, si silver, silver quills. I think that's what it was. Silver feathers, something like that. You need to meet up with one of them, huh? That's what you're looking for. Um, in a manner of speaking, I see. Can't go into much de detail. Hmm. Close knit, close to the chest. I see. Now, is there any other? Well reason that I should, you know, fear you coming into my bar. Noticing all your weapons and, well, such. Most people bear pickaxes and, well, mining gear. You guys oh. are clearly adventurers. Eduardo raises his, his, like, little hand and he goes, well, not an adventurer. I'm a gladiator. A gladiator? 
You mean to tell me you're a gladiator? Why, why yes, man. Yes, I am. You've won, or are you just, like, one of the ones that they throw in to get the, you know, the free wins? Uh... Well, a little bit of both. I was, I was born into the gladiator business. I've won a good handful of my battles. Some I haven't. No shit. Well, I might have to see a fight then. You let me know. You have a fight, you come back into my cavern. Do you know, don't ever forget the Ruby Rakor. You let me know. I won't ever forget, my friend. Now, while it's you are cool. here, you are in the Ruby Rakor. You have spent good fair of money. Thank you. I appreciate it. Is there anything that I could assist you with? Um, what's... Do you know any information on, um... What's happening around here? Well, recently, there's been basically a rush for this so-called excavation site. I guess there's some new entry point that has opened up. Many of the miners are just going haywire all over it. They think that it is something lost from the past. They can't find a way in, though, I heard. But it's just an entryway. Supposedly it's been closed, but... That's all I've heard. Got some weird markings of some sort of gem. But that's un <laughs> not really uncommon around here, but... Most of the valuables within the soil's been mined recently. Many people have been coming up short... And, uh, that with many of the goblins, they've been infestating, stealing most of what gems we have been able to find. Whatever we do find, we try and bring back to town to trade with some of the other regions, and the goblins, those fuckers keep just stealing them, taking them, cutting off some of our miners. We lose them at least five or six a week. Goblins, you say? Well, it sounds like he would need a bodyguard. I mean, Alron could definitely use some better fucking security, and he looks at the guard with uh, some pretty evil eyes. Well, Edwada leans in a little closer to the door. If you promise me a good fight, I'll, I might do this for free. How about this? You go check out that town board. See if there's anything that interests you. If you think that you really, really want to go in, well, head straight to some mischief, I know that the old man, Mr. Pug Jameson, is up to something. He's been asking for a group of adventurers for at least two months now, but no one's taken the job. Well, do you know what that job entails? I know that he thinks there's something that, it, well, it lies out within the fields. As he kind of points back behind him. And you notice that behind on the wall, there's a bunch of sand dunes and mines that go on for what seems to be forever. He points at it just north of here. We call it the Fields. It's a small town. to where some of the most lucrative mining areas are. It's actually near where the excavation site is. Where this entry point has been found. It's also near one of the forests. One of the few forests in the area. Where the goblins. They've been mustering some units... Lane traps, a lot of guerrilla warfare, I do so say, seems to be going on. They hit us and run away, take what they can. Even if they lose a couple, it seems as if they are okay with just stealing what they can, even if they die. Now, if there's anything that uh, I could help you with, 
Maybe this god, if he knows anything, could help you down to good old Jameson's place. Or at least show you where the board is. Yeah. I'm gonna... uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I currently have an empty cup. Uh, and I would, I would love oh, some oh, dwarven ale. Oh, I'm. Uh, <laughs> Wait, so I say dwarven ale? He, yeah. He kind of, he kind of goes back. Uh, I can. I, I'm so sorry. He reaches back. Yes. Not for. I, I'll make this one free on the house, sir. And he pours. Not, not he pours one for you. This one is actually one that I make myself here. Oh, uh, yeah, Think of it. Dwarven? Yeah. Uh, I will say thank you. He looks back at you and just nods. Now, welcome to Auron. If there's anything that I can help you with, come down to the Ruby Record. I am sure that talks of anything may come by my ear. And he kind of goes back and starts cleaning. Just a couple little, little glasses starts... Tidying up, you see him kind of walk out past Adwada and then starts making his way into what looks to be a doorway where he goes into a back room. I'm going to take those three drinks, take them over to the miner's table, and just approach the table. All right. Now, as you approach the table, give me a perception check. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Let's see. How do I do that? <laughs> I'm working. You just click click no, you're good. No, you're good. Yep, uh, you just click the perception on your on your yeah. skills. Yep, there you go. Ooh, so Ooh. that is not so hot. Um, as you walk up, you notice that it seems as if these are later aged um, humans. They're just males in their later years doing what looks to be a normal job. You just see normal mining gear, and they seem to be finished with whatever they were drinking. Um, they kind of look up to you as they speak in common. This one to the front. Uh, how, how do you do, sir? Well, you guys look like you've had a long day. So here's a round on me. I'm just <laughs> going to place, place the spiced rum in front of each of them. They don't even say anything. And this one kind of peels up his goggles. And you see like the tan line of like dust and soot just like mm -hmm. not present from it and he lifts them up and looks at you well thank you but what's your name my name is fuck this well fuck this i appreciate this and he kind of looks at you and he flips you a, a silver piece oh i appreciate it i i know it's not much but we don't have enough for another round, and this is going to definitely allow us to sleep. Well, no problem, sir. I was hoping I could get some information from you guys. They start as sipping uh, immediately. Go ahead. Yep. As as he's go ahead and doing this, I'm gonna just uh, stealthily nearby and just uh, listen in on the conversation. See if I can try and get some information. Already. As you look on in, you notice that the guard kind of gets up and starts making his way out. As he does so, he leaves. You notice that you guys essentially are in here just with these few patrons. Um, information about, about what? Well, um, word around the town is that there's some sort of entry point that you got, that the miners have, um, fallen upon. Do you know anything about that? Actually, we were there today. The doorway, well, what we're calling the doorway, it looks as if some sort of rubble about 20 feet below the surface kind of fell away when we were moving some equipment over this part of land, and it just, it was a weak point. It almost killed two men. We always say that you gotta make sure to be safe. But anyway, we looked at the doorway and we tried to enter it. We hit it with our picks. Nothing. We couldn't figure it out. We noticed that on top of this doorway, there was some sort of marking. It looked like some sort of ball or something with fur or 
I'm not quite sure what it was. I couldn't quite make a good look at it, but there was a lot of structure beneath that point. We noticed that it went deep within the surface, almost like vertically down, completely like straight into the earth. Can you, do you think you'd be able to draw the symbol you saw, or at least close to it? He kind of pulls out a really dirty, almost like handkerchief, and you see with just the dirtiness on his hands, he dips in his beer and just kind of starts drawing this, like, almost football-shaped looking structure with what looks to be, like, small little wings attached. He says, it... It kind of looked like that, but with like little tiny triangles all over the 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 round thing. So it kind of just looks like a football with like little sharp triangles all over it with like what you can depict as looking like wings. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It, it it kind of it almost looked like a bug, but I wasn't quite sure that I could say that out loud with all the miners around, but I'm not sure. Now that I've had a few in me, I, I don't know what it was. Did, uh, did the door, um, anything happen when you struck the door or when the, the rubble collapsed? Any kind of odd features or anything? Not that I can notice, but I knew that the more that I did strike at that door, the goblins came. It wasn't more than but five fucking minutes after we fell into that hole. We had spears, arrows, and God fucking knows what else raining down on some of us. We barely so even I, made it out. I caught him off right there and I slammed my hand onto like, goblins, where? The man in the back, somewhat startled, starting to pass out halfway through. Yeah, fuck goblins. <laughs> fuck it. Uh, uh, head north, the fields. Uh, you go towards the fields, search for some... Find any treasures, I'm, they'll come and find you. Hmm. Good to know. Good to go, know. go far enough off the path, I'm sure you'll find them even, but you may not see them first. The sneaky fuckers. Oh, don't... Don't worry, I'm very well acquainted with their kind. He looks you up and down and notices you are all decently equipped. I don't doubt it, but what do you want to do with these goblins? What would you do if I told you that I might know a man that if you are able to rid them from, let's say, that area, he might be a happy man? Oh, I should say dwarf. <laughs> and the others kind of laugh. <laughs> well, I'd say I'd rather do my orders uh, right to justice, then. Let me tell you a name. If you head into the fields, if you go just in, you'll find a small town. In there, the leader, his name is Kragar Stammer. He's the leader. He'll be able to tell you a little bit more about what's really going on there. I'm sure he has the ins and out of the area completely. Very well. I thought we'll head there immediately. And then I start walking my way out. Thank you for your time, man. All right. I'm going to take that silver piece that you flipped me, set it back on the table, and walk away before he has a chance to give it back. <laughs> All right, you take it, and they just kind of go on sipping their drink, and then at a moment they look up and they kind of catch a glance at Vlad. And they notice he's quite different. Then they're not quite sure if they're just really drunk or if that is... A pale, white, somewhat vampiric man they're staring at. And then they realize that there's also a You're thinking some portal. racist right now, aren't you, staring guys? <laughs> he looks at you, and he's like, what? <laughs> he just looks back down at the table, almost as if he didn't hear what you just said. 
I don't know. He just stammers to himself and then stops. I just follow everybody out. <laughs> All right. You as, guys. As we're leaving, as yeah. we're leaving I am going to be like, yo, what are you? Yeah, like, the... hold on. <laughs> yeah, like, uh... what? I've noticed that as, as well. Like, why is it that, uh, you know, we got like two dragon guys, a turtle guy, an elf. And the semi-human look, the normalest looking one is just because you got really light skin. Yeah, I'm just what pale. <laughs> just pale? Like they don't I mean, I'm pretty eye. sure Fuck This knows, he's a paladin, and he probably knows what I am, but still. <laughs> don't fucking judge me, what the fuck? <laughs> eh, maybe it burns easily. <laughs> yeah, like, come on. I mean, I, I, yeah, I know. I'm pretty sure about, you know what I am too, dude, but still. <laughs> I know all about sunlight sensitivity, bud. Like, <laughs> it's not my friend either. <laughs> all right so you guys make your way out and as you guys are making your way out you notice that the guard he hasn't made it too far you guys kind of swerve and slide your way out and as you do so you notice that the day is still somewhat passing by um nothing crazy seems to be going on within the town currently but at this point you do notice where there you are. Hang on. Wah, wah, wah. Where's the freaking there it is? Jesus. It's bigger than I thought it was. You go and make your way back. And as you exit the guard, he kind of points his hand. I can, I can take you to the tower. Uh, excuse me. One too many. The board, not the tower. <laughs> You don't want to go to the tower. <laughs> if I take you there, you got to promise, though, that you're not going to get yourself killed. I wouldn't want to take you to a job that you're just going to get yourself killed. Killed? Oh Has it ever crossed your mind that some of us I might want to die? I mean, that's fucking really dark, so I'm not even going <laughs> to follow that up with another, you know, question. And he just kind of Or might starts, already be kind of dead. He already starts just walking. If you want <laughs> to know, just you guys want to follow. Him? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, after, oh, I'd say about a two minute jaunt, make your way a little bit up north to what you can tell is a little bored. The guard, he kind of points over. Yeah. It hangs on the outside of the councilman's building. Inside there, you can speak with the man himself, Roventana. He's the town leader, though I don't think he's in right now. I think he's out with his missus. They're on some sort of lunch or something. I'm not quite sure, honestly. But, um, yeah, if you, uh, if you got questions, he's, uh, he's the one you're going to want to be asking. What time of day is it? Um, it's about, I'd say, dusk-ish. It's getting to be the latter part of the day. It's probably going to be, it's about 8-ish p.m. All right. Um. The guard I go just kind of starts making I his way I just the guard, yeah. Yep. Eduardo looks at, um, Pern and he goes, Hey, um, from what I heard... I sense that you're going to go after it as goblins. You care if I... And, and if I am? You care if I tag along? I kind of want to... I thought we were a whole group. I thought we all said fuck goblins. I mean, I don't have any personal thing against goblins, but they seem to be bothering the town, and that's a problem. Well, man, I'm going to tell you right now. I, I just want to kill some. Hey, some of my best friends are goblins. But they're not the raid adventurer goblins, okay? They're the merchant goblins. They're like well, almost cool. completely merchant different goblins. Merchant goblins and regular goblins are two completely different things. Oh, as long as you don't slow me down there, stout one. We okay, so one we can either wait for this, this councilman fuck to get back, or I could kindly break into his house and get all the information we need. We can, we, uh, you know, just putting that option out there. Nah, I gotta work with this guy. So, oh, yeah, grizzly hey, one, hey, are you saying that I can't break into his house without him knowing I did? Are you questioning my abilities? I'm not uh, questioning your abilities. I'm questioning your morals. Hey, I didn't say I was going to take anything of value. 
as uh, as they're unless, arguing, you, unless as, you're counting unless you're counting information. As uh, yeah. they're arguing this, I start uh, climbing up onto the building. <laughs> All right, not cool. Okay, not this cool. piece of shit. I calmly walk up the building because I can do that. All right. <laughs> I'm three foot tall. I can't so, find this. As you guys walk up to the, I mean, you guys, you guys can look at the board. If you guys, want some <laughs> they, they ignored the board. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They, you don't want the board. I think it's a literal dog. What is that? Okay. Okay. Right I'm just right there. Yeah. This is the board right here. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. The board, right, yeah, I want to look at the board with Kodo. Is that your name, Coda? Yeah. Then I'll just sit on the roof up here. I just wanted to be up here because somebody else wanted to climb up here. I mean, <laughs> you guys can do you. I'm just I'm just making sure I'm getting everything you guys want. Uh, I'm going to go ahead because uh, I'm bet my character's been on an urgency right now to find out what's going on with... And so... <laughs> He's uh, going to go ahead to this window and try to he's going to take one of his quills, his uh, arrow heads, if you will, and try and. Holy shit. Stop that, please. No, stop. No. Stop. Stop. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> You're going to damage something and then they're going to know we broke in. And then I'm like, oh, by all means, be my guest. God damn. <laughs> what, what is a uh, Jimmy this window open check? Would it be sleight of hand? <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, yeah. It's this plus four. I don't know how to add expertise to it. So it's 28. Sorry, I wasn't. All right, so you, are you on the roof? Is that what we're going for? Dropping in? <laughs> is, that what I'm, yeah. is that what I'm gathering here? Sorry, I just opened the window for the him. Because they convinced me not to break so, into his house. So but as I didn't you, want him to get caught. As you make your way up onto the house and you jimmy through, you kind of shimmy in with your little tools and you realize after a few moments that your tool kind of gets caught for a second you push barely trying not to leave any markings and then as you think that you're about to break the wood you hear it boom, and you feel the latch open and the window just kind of pulls slightly towards you and you can well, see I've... inside within an inch and I just sit, sit there with Got my it. cross. I'm like, well, I could have done that. And then just pushes the window open. <laughs> now, as you make your way inside this building, you, well, at least looking in, do you enter or are you just looking in? Uh, I I'm go looking. In. He's entering. I'm going, but I'm going to jauntily and almost to the point like you wouldn't even hear me come in, like faintly float down with my uh, boots. Of, All right, uh, my wing boots. All right, so Vlad, I'm gonna copy your token. You're in. All right, and you're looking in. All right, so as you look in, you notice that this building, though it looks to be two story, you notice it it is not. These is more or less like a a moon or a sun little like skylight built within this room, almost more or less for more storage. You see beneath you that a large opening of a room lies within it. And you notice that there are kind of books that lay everywhere around here. And give me a perception check. And a... Ooh, yeah, give me a stealth check. Wait. Stealth check? Yeah, oh, wait, I'm looking. You you both can give me Perrin and Vlad. Both of you can give me perception checks as you think you might hear somebody talking. I'm very sneaky. It's the way you look in before you jump. <laughs> uh, you want a stealth or just perception? Uh, yeah, you're up there too. You might as well give me a stealth as well as you guys are doing. And that's it. also plus four because okay, I so don't know how to add expertise. As you look in, you notice that you see part of the inner of a building. You see what looks to be a small little study room that is located here. This is what you see. As you look down, you see a row of books next to a fireplace that is not lit. A small outlet chimney that goes out the side of the wall, not vertically, out behind, that feeds directly to the side of the wall. You see a cozy little area that you can read. It goes up that it must be lit under the moonlight or sun during the day. Okay, before we continue, I'm going to use one of my class features that allows me to link telepathically to, like, anybody in our party. 
And I'm just going to like set it between me and John and Kodo because he seems to be the smartest. Okay. And fuck this because I feel he can sense what I'm doing anyway. And I can't find the turtle because I'm too busy looking in this house. <laughs> so that way we can speak. I'm just going to like completely just be like, hey, by the way, I can like talk in your head. And I'm just like, oh, oh I'm not saying I had people talk in my head before. You better not read my thoughts. You should think instead of speak, dumbass. Oh, that, that, that was all thought. That was, that was all thought. Right? It was just, <laughs> outside, just sure. outside <laughs> Kodo is like, whoa, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, and as, <laughs> as they're up loud. there, you guys, what, do you, what is Edwada, Kodo, and fuck this doing? Uh... Uh, by this Edward point, is just looking at the bounding board right now. All right, uh, what, what are you doing, Kodo? I was kidding. Kodo, uh, uh, Turtle's in it too. Fucking. The, uh, at this point, uh, Kodo has pulled out, uh, out of out of a satchel, he has pulled out um, what is essentially a modern day thermos, and he uncaps it and he pours coffee into it. Oh my god! <laughs> and he so he's just sipping his coffee. He and uh, hey, hey, you want any of this? And I, uh, uh, I'll offer some to fuck this. <laughs> yeah, I hear sure, that. Why not? This is some good and stuff. I'm like, good there's stuff. some coffee down there. <laughs> yeah. I immediately stop looking out for John. <laughs> Jump down, my like, uh, pull out a cup. I'm like, hey, <laughs> hey. Yeah, uh, now, <laughs> as you do that, I need you to give me a uh, acrobatics check. And. I just think in my mind, like, oh, you basic civil. This is also this is this is one of my. This is another one. That's eighteen. Ooh. I'm like you basic civil creatures oh. and your your need for. Remember, my character has climb speed, so I didn't like jump. I like just yeah, walk down fine. the wall. Now, uh, as you hang on one second, as you make your way down the wall, you notice that there's a little like part to the roof that you almost didn't notice, and you kind of kick what looks to be a small I'd say decent sized like rock or piece of debris that almost looks as if was missed by some of the stone masons when they were crafting part of this and you just kind of hear it tick off the side of the building and land outside on one of the crates not making much noise you hear nothing stir inside though alright well, now that I've got my coffee, I'm going to go up to the other part where it was safer to walk up and walk back up and get a ball up here so I can see around the house. So not entering. I think up here, not entering. I'm looking out while telepathically linking to John to see if anybody approaches the vicinity what? while sipping coffee. No one, no one is approaching, though as you go here, Vlad, you definitely now do hear what you think is someone speaking on the inside of this building. So, one second real quick. Um, Wade, to fix your expertise problem, if you go into your character sheet uh, and you go to the attributes and abilities, you can scroll all the way down to acrobatics and stealth and yada yada yada, and it it'll literally gives you a value you can put in what that actual value is, and it'll override your character sheet. Does that make sense? So the oh, so it'd be what is it? What level am I? It's nine right now. It'd be yeah. nine plus four. Correct. So it'd be, be thirteen. So correct. let's see if that worked. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. There you go. I do have perception sleight of hand. Sad. Do go. I need a perception check for Yep. Hearing the voices? Mm-hmm. I'm I wanna do two. I wanna do one bear, and then if I don't hear anything, I wanna down this coffee and then put the cock <laughs> down to the roof and then try, you know. Sure. You know yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. So here's the first one. It's plus four. Because I haven't done it yet, so it's twenty. Alright, so as you just put your ear to the roof, you hear reverberations on the inside of what sounds like two males speaking. You hear one, we must figure out what is going on at this site. 
if it has anything to do with what I think, it could be Daya. And then you hear a much younger voice. What could it be, though? What would I risk if I don't do anything, if I do not act? If I just sit by and wait, what's the worst thing that could happen? Uh, you could risk Geom, or at least Alron entirely. Do you really think it's that big of a deal? Yes, it is that important, I think. We must act. And then you hear footsteps and a brisk walk across the room. What do you do? So, what, so um, what I I I'm going to tell people, I'm going to repeat everything I'm hearing to these guys through my link. Um, and then I'm going to be like, I'm going to do something really dumb that could get me in trouble. I just want everybody to know that. But hey, and before fuck, you do that, fuck it. Kodo, fuck this. Anybody else? Do you guys want to do anything before he does whatever he's doing? Yeah. Yeah. So, can, you believe, can you believe this? Fuck this. There's a job on here to, to, to like get a cat. And as you and look, like you me. actually do <laughs> see one. Cat. Yeah, you see uh -huh. one that literally says um, a cat needs fed at least twice a week. Um, you also see upon looking at this board now that you really kind of glance at it. You notice that on this work board that goblins are a common thread here. Goblins are flooding everywhere, especially the mining fields. There are injured miners and many people that are seeking help with these goblin infestations. They seem to be running amok on most of Geome. Though, with new refugees and new people coming to establish life here, that is kind of, I guess, expected. Now, there's also some other, I'd say conflicts or issues within the town there has been four missing boys all around the age of 17 that have gone missing moms of the families swear that they have not run away and are good children something must have happened there is also one other thing of livestock that has come up missing near the fields recently all within the last week Ugh, I despise cats. Yeah, they're okay. That's they're all you dog. got out of what you just read? Yeah. <laughs> There's a bunch of fucked up jobs on there. <laughs> Pick them up the cat. <laughs> Fuck the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck I this mean, shit, I, I'm out. I mean, <laughs> missing kids, focused on the cat. Okay, sick. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna cat. drop down here. Cool. I'm gonna knock on the window. Uh, <laughs> where am I in this? Real quick, like, a lot of this is all going on. What have I been doing? In the, in the house. That is up to you. We'll, we'll, we'll go to you before I do my... Before yeah. we go back to What me. do you want to do? Are you staying okay, outside so of the house or do you want to go inside? Hold on, because... Uh, yeah, I, was, I, was, I should already be inside because I said I was going to float it down with my winged boots. Like, as if no one would be able to hear me. Okay, so then you, as you kind of make your way down in, you start floating. And as you descend down in, you see the room. It's somewhat starts to illuminate as you see a candle from the inner part of this area it is lit as you make your way down in you see off to the left a double-sided doorway you are the only one in this small room as you make your way i'd say okay. about eight to nine feet up on the side of the wall not yet to the floor but hanging gotcha. on top of uh Basically, there's like the top of the floor, and then there's that top canopy where like the moon roof was. You're basically mm -hmm. kind of like crouched down, kneeling in between that where you just entered through the window. Gotcha. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna look around the room real quick to see what what I got to deal with here. All right, give me a perception check. <coughs> All right. As you look around the room, you see many books. Most of these books seem to deal with either political education or. I'd say some sort of scholarly work in mostly politics and how to be a rightful leader. As you look upon this, you see that the books have not been used. 
they seem to be brand new and most of them in pristine condition and whosoever books these are has not seemed to have been reading most of them. As you look around the room, you notice that there seems to be a note sticking out of one of the books quite far. It seems to possibly have been maybe wrote or looked at recently. As you kind of make your way over, you grab it while rummaging through the rest of the papers and you see a name, Rovan. You know this from the other men that spoke in the town, that Rovan is most likely the leader. As you read through most of this page, you see that many people in the town of Alron are not happy with him. And as you start pulling more papers, you see that these are complaints that are piling up. And there are a lot of them about how he is too young for the job and he is failing the city. And before too long, he's not going to be the leader any longer. And that when election time comes at the end of the year, he better hope that he's not in the city. Other than that... You find nothing of true value other than uh, what looks to be some sort of watch or possibly fairly family heirloom that you see just kind of sitting on the chair cushion. Nothing, because uh, nothing, anything out of this ordinary, like maybe like notes or because do- because uh, right now I'm trying to look for maybe that because I when I was stealthily listening to that conversation about looking at the shape of what those wings are and you know, looking for anything resembling that. Nothing that you find in these, no. No, okay. So then I kind of just determine what I need to know, give me some information about this land a little bit, so I just float back up out the window. All right. And as you make your way up and back out of the window, you make your way back out. You become perched once again, right outside. Now, if nobody else has anything to do, Vlad is going to knock on the window, correct? Uh, all right. John, did you share any of that that information with the group at all? Or are you still up on the roof? Uh, I'm still up on the roof. I have not shared it yet. Okay. All right. As you guys make your way in, or excuse me, as you tap on the window, Vlad, correct? You're still doing this? Wait. All right, my mom was at my door. Okay, yeah. what? Are you still knocking on the window? Yeah, I'm going to ward everybody, because it sounds like this is a pretty big deal. And me, the good Samaritan thief, can't allow that to happen, <clears throat> so I'm going to knock on the window. All right, as you knock on the window, you kind of hear what sounds like a soft kind of pinting as you... And as you tap, you hear the voices and the footsteps stop completely. After about three seconds, you see a young man walk outside of the front door, and he stares up as you see this person. He stands, and he looks up at the top and sees you standing, Vlad. What? What are you doing up there? Get down from there. Doors are boring. What? But who are you? Why are you on top of my roof? I'm Vlad. And you were talking about some pretty heavy stuff in there. About you were listening to our conversations. Hey, hey. I don't want anybody to panic, but you should probably talk about this inside. Roll me a persuasion check. <laughs> he kind of looks at you up and down. All right, but I don't know if I can trust you with all those weapons. I've just now met you. I literally don't have any weapons on me. You're forgetting yes. who I am. But what about that other man that is standing on top of the roof holding a bow? Uh, oh, okay. So so I, I, my mic was muted. I, when he was rolling the persuasion, I said uh, I was going to roll back, like go back this way. Without him hopefully seeing me with stealth. And they come around the corner like, guys, what's going on? This is weird. <laughs> he kind of looks over. So you wish to speak with me inside, huh? Yeah, and that Kodo guy probably is a lot better at explaining things to me. 
I don't know this Kodo, but if we are going I to point, speak... I point down... I point... I, can I... How do I do lines again? Uh, you wanna, just, I, point, I point... I point... I point down to the little kobold cleric man. What up? I need to speak with him. And me. Yeah. Can I... Can I assume that you're Roven? Yes. I'm Roven. Yeah. I'm Roven you're the Tanner. Guy. Come, let us speak inside then. Can I come through the window? <laughs> Be careful. Don't break anything. Now, who's <coughs> entering? Uh, I'll go with them. Why not? I go through the window. Okay. This will uh, help hopefully advance my... Ed Edwada, you, do you going in? I don't know if Cody ever came back. All right, he's keeping post outside. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I just accidentally there? zoomed out a million. Could you drag my camera back <laughs> for me? Oh, oh well. Yeah. Are we allowed to come in, sir? Yeah, 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 I'm just making sure. Do you want to come in with them, Cody? Oh, uh, was yeah, sure. All right, as you make your way inside, bum, bum, bum. you see this. You notice Roven goes and makes. Yeah, could his you way. drag me? I will. Sorry. I haven't dragged yeah, anybody he's, yet. Yeah, he's, he's working on it. I'm standing on the ceiling. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, Hanging upside down. down. He's he's being all upside down like and just whoops. Can you do vertically? You can do. <laughs> so uh, I just <laughs> I just shift my eyebrow up and I'm like neat body trick. Now, as Roven comes and takes a seat. You see a large man sitting. As he sits, you see a large beard with small glasses on his nose. Who are these fellows of yours, Roven? I'm not quite sure myself, but they seem to need to speak with me, and they've already been listening to our conversation. And you see his eye kind of perks as the old man kind of stands and readjusts. Yo. I am Bug Jameson. I am the lapidary of this town. I am one of the few left that can cut the precious gems of this land. If you ever need anything, please just ask next time. There's no need to eavesdrop now you say you come asking or at least needing Rovan's advice what of this yeah, yeah backwards we're here to offer aid because it sounded like you guys were dealing with something kind of big yeah and i can't in my good conscience allow that to happen as they kind of look at each How high other is the ceiling here it's about 50 feet total we're in the middle where you're at the highest point at like the second oh, tier sick. so i yelled that yeah they kind of I'm, just... I'm gonna come down the wall i didn't realize the ceiling was this high in here so now you <laughs> come you come down now you're about so i'd say about 12 feet so you're dangling about eye level of them sitting but uh i go and say um i'm mainly here because i hear there's a goblin problem they both look at each other uh, Rovin gets up. There's more than just a goblin problem, but... Yes, I mean, yes, we could use help with the goblins. Do you think you could help? I can, for some information, if you will. Hmm. I do know that you're not quite the popular one around here. He just kind of stares at you. I wouldn't say that. I would just say that I'm learning my way. Uh, Listen. Different perspective as the people would say. Quick question: Are these goblins like the civilized goblins, or are they the feral kind of goblins? Oh no, they Let's they see. they are organized, but they are not civilized. If that makes any sense, they okay. So the feral the feral goblins, okay. They I kill and murder. Then I will help. Now, you say for information. What is this information you seek? I seek the information of uh, this gem you found. 
he kind of immediately to be found? he immediately darts eyes over to Pug Jameson as he looks at him. Jameson deeply sits back into this chair and then leans forward and grabs the book on the table. If you come seeking the gem, know that you shall not have an easy journey. Well, this... I just know, I just must know if this will harm the forest or not. I have the, my organization are very deeply concerned about it, and they've sent me to deal with this. He looks very deeply into your eyes as he turns. It will affect everything. If my... Like, a good everything, or... Listen. That sounds grave. If my calculations are correct, this gem is not what it was just spoken of. I have read the tales. I have spoke to my forefather trainer, the lapidary before me. There is no way that this gem could be what I think it is. This gem, if it is what I think, was one of the first gems that was formed upon this land when the calamity happened. I think it's what gives power. Well, he looks at you. Can I trust you with a story that many don't hear about this fable? And he kind of leans forward and stands. Something that if I tell you, you must embark on this mission. That is my only constituency plan of wanting you in here. What well, has to do with my orders? Orders, so by all means. That is That's my contingency. I say it. Oh, Agree boy, or don't. That's yeah, a my oath. I mean, you had me at Jim. From be honest, it's quite and grave. My, it's quite literally my job to help you with your problems. So yeah. He looks at you all. The part of the story is that this gem. It was actually founded by the first leader of all the legions. And I read and was even told by my forefather Lapidary that this gem is one of the first that was caused by the calamity that started affecting the land. It gave such great power that the first leader had to fragment and separate the gem, locking away whatever power into different places, into different pieces. Supposedly, there were five pieces that were locked away. Four for each of the main regions in which he found it. <laughs> which is funny now that we have found Geom. And one which supposedly embodies whatever it brings forth. And he shows you the picture of this book. And all of you now get a very clear visual of a drawing of what looks to be an egg-shaped gem with, like, cut 
corners still in almost like a I don't even like almost like a gemstone cutting octangular like oblong pieces with beautifully formed gemmed wings that sparkle in many different colors these these scales that run alongside the gem the ridges those are impossible to create by human hands there must be something there this is what I task of you. Find this entry point. Seek what lies there and what causes these goblins to stir so eagerly recently. As I think that the two are possibly one and the same problem. He pulls a small glowing necklace from his side pouch and you see that it has a small little almost like key look to it this i think shall open the door if i am correct i was given this by my forefather while in training he told me the stories. As a young lapidary, I thought it was just to fuel me to become great, but now I think it, it might have been to send me on a great quest. And I just didn't see it. He pulls it out and hands it forward. Who wishes to take it? Yeah, I'll step up to the plate, I suppose. So as you step forward, you put your hand out and he drops it in as you take a step back. Rovin kind of speaks up. And of the goblins. I don't mean for you to go into harm's way for the pug, but if you run into them, please help us in any way that you can. I cannot what pay much, but I can pay something. Yeah, it'd be no problem at all. I'm quite uh, familiar with them, if you will, with my force. Pug looks upon you and then looks at Rovin. Well, it is going to be night soon, and if you are going to make a way through the desert to the fields without the heat... I suggest you travel now and stay within the mines. There's a small town that lies within the fields. Seek refuge there and then start asking about the entry point. Find what is going on. He sits back down. He starts sipping on a fine drink and closes the book and sits it on the table. Come back when you have answers. And good luck. Let us hope that this story may become a great tale. And his eyes turn forward as Rovin turns. He grabs a book and it seems as he expects is your departure. What do you do? Uh, I guess we did. Uh, I would depart. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Alrighty. So, the group... I go back out through the window. <laughs> you kind of... <laughs> make your way back up through the roof Bye. and perch your way back out. So, uh, don't the party... Don't you on the way out. <laughs> the party is back in the middle of the city. And you guys now have the map. So we we have a couple options. We do. Yeah, we well yeah we were recommended to. Uh, uh, he said if we wanted to get to get to this town uh, in the fields, we should go now before uh, before it gets too hot out. Right. The other option is uh, I I have a house. 
I have a house that I just can carry with me. We could okay. just sleep for the night. But well, that means we're I'm, traveling through the desert during the day, and that sounds awful. And I mean no offense to you, little one, but uh, being an outstrider, which is what I am, uh, we uh, know much about the nature and the world itself, so I would agree with your assessment that we should probably get moving now while the sun is down. And then yeah. put your house down when it's hot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, luck luckily, luckily, nighttime's, you know, it's right for ambush. Not a problem. Oh, don't worry about yeah, ambush. Yeah, I see in the darkness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like well, it more than sun. It let, hurts let my me, skin. Yeah. Let me show you. Come here. Come here. Let me show you how I see in the darkness. Uh, do you walk up? Uh, don't which have, don't, don't, what else have? Dark vision? Yeah, we have dark vision. Yeah, he sees in the yeah. dark. The no, turtle's no, no, the no. one that... No, I'm going to grant you my dark vision, which instead of 60, like 120 feet or 60 feet or whatever you have, is 300 60. feet. Oh, yeah, you so, have light sensitivity. Yeah, so, <laughs> no, so mega dark vision. Yeah, yeah no, that's a Twilight Cleric thing I have. Being an open-minded and all that, I was like, yeah, sure, whatever, I'll walk up to you. Uh, and so, yes, uh, you all have uh, uh, you all have dark vision up to 300 feet for the next hour. So, um, that's and dope. hold on, yeah, get yep, up. Yep. Oh, neat trick you got one there. One second, one second. I just want you to realize I'm half vampire, and you see better in the dark than I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Some you know, vampires, you bats, creature of the night. This, this is this is better. Yeah, yeah, it is. So my whole entire life is dedicated <laughs> to uh, to preventing attacks at night. Essentially, I'm pretty good at it. And as you guys all hear <clears throat> Squandron for about another five minutes, you guys decide that it's time to head out. You gather your supplies and you all group and you start making your way towards the north gate, leaving Alron, noticing that as you do so, a small river runs alongside most of your passage. As you do so, upon leaving, you see it starts to become dark. The air is thin, and the night is cool, and as you stride for about 20 minutes, you notice that the city is long behind you, and you've had a pretty steady pace. You make your way outside of the city. <clears throat> now, you notice that this is going to take, I'd say, about a 30-minute walk to get to the the majority part of the major part of the desert where you guys are going to be walking to. You guys start coming upon what looks to be a small forest opening with rock caverns and a huge wall on the left side. And you guys see this. Ba, ba, ba. As it becomes dark, you guys start traveling down a formed path. Upon doing so, you see that there is great vegetation and a rock wall to your left that goes up about 50 to 100 feet in some places. As you look across through your dark vision, you notice that wind blows and some things stir in the night, but nothing too big. Uh, what would you classify this landscape right now? Um, I would say it's like, uh, forest. Forest? Okay, fantastic. Because I am a natural explorer, which means, uh, difficult terrain will not slow the group's travel. And, uh, except for unless we get lost by magical means. Okay. Now, as you guys kind of make your way to about here, I need everybody to give me a perception check. As you feel this almost warm summer night which is very odd, very different than the city of Alron, which felt very cold, almost a winter-esque. And as you kind of just peer out... Okay, good. All right, so as a group, I'm going to take you as a group perception here. You guys look around, and you notice that amongst you, you notice the movements have stopped in this area. 
you see that there are some stone walls located around you in certain areas and trees protruding and the normal murmurs of the night have subsided the rats and some of the things and birds that were chirping in the areas before stopped as you make your way up further down the path you make your way to about here until Perrin you kind of just look and you notice some very odd footsteps I could just know I feel like something's off like I know like yep. nature shouldn't be going silent like this yep and you just peer off and under the moonlight sky you see some very small footsteps give me my, an investigation uh, check my bow is starting to hum a little bit because uh, for my him it would be survival okay survival with uh, my actually bow tracking of footsteps is survival oh yeah with my bow of warning we can't be surprised and we have advantage on our initiative rules that's I think it, oh that's hot is it, is it, <clears> I, it's, I think it's just his yeah, it's just a, I have I have advantage of my initiative rules, just me. But uh, yes, but yes, yeah, yes. But, but me and friends cannot be surprised uh, what while I have this bow with me. Really? Yeah. That is nutty. That is nutty. Um. So I will survival. survival. Yep. I at this point will also use the ability that gives me uh, advantage on my initiative as well. So this is right around the time I'll go ahead and like snap my finger uh, and all that and go. I conjure one of my daggers ready to just chuck it at, like, the most hostile thing that I see. As you guys make your way slightly forward, you see that the footsteps grow and start diverging. Some stopping, making their way into the brush. Some would look like, as you now peer to the left, you see what look like hands and footholds climbed up the rocks. In a moment, uh, I, I start you, drawing an arrow against the my bow. You hear a small rock kind of down the side, and as you look up, you see a small shifty figure kind of jaunt right through under the night sky. You hear to the right something rummage in this tree, and then uh, I take dead a silence. Shot. Where? I gotta take a shot right near where that tree was, rummaging. Give me an attack roll. How far away is that tree from me? This tree is from where you guys are. Is hang on one second. It's just within range of me being oh, able fantastic. to toss. Fantastic! That is fantastic. I'll ball. be ready to follow up a shot if something comes in vision. Uh, as as he lets this bow go, as this arrow go. Uh, Kodo is just gonna be like, "Oh my god!" Do I just uh, <laughs> click my longbow or? Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you click your bow. Kills, kills random forest kid. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> They've never learned this lesson. I'm survival, but I like, but I, I've been around though. I know the when little a Timmy around. the forager's down. <laughs> The he half goblin getting, child. He's just getting food for me. He's just getting food for his little orphan sister. Make, make that you, a fifth boy. Who's you pull up. and draw your bow. As you do so, you waste an arrow into the heart of this tree. As you do so, there's a quiet stir for just a moment. And then you hear a couple branches. Something's falling. You notice something struck in the tree hit and it's fallen you see this an arrow protruding from a very small goblin that seems to be perched at the very bottom of this tree you see an arrow struck right between its chest we'll as you hunted. stare at it you hear more footsteps upon the rocks above you. Prepare yourselves. I need everybody. Get over initiative. Now click your token before you click the initiative button. We got five minutes left until the session's over. Eh, we can, I mean, yeah. We can, I mean, we. Yeah. Can, I mean, you can. You can bounce if you want to. 
Got a date, John? No, no, I was just curious that we were ending right on time. I mean... You, Would you want to do the combat, or do you want to call it? That wouldn't be a bad place to stop. That'd actually be a pretty good cliffhanger until next week. I'm right, that's fine. fine. Right. Yeah, I'm fine with it. That's, that's, pretty the... good. That, that's a fantastic cliffhanger. Is the initiative button the circle thing on the bottom? It's it's in between your AC and your speed. Yeah, All right, you so then you got to click your initiative. So then we're gonna. You got to check your token first. Yeah, make sure you got your token clicked and then hit initiative. Okay. All right, so then we'll end off with you. You noose your arrow and you. Have advantage, have... Though. I have advantage though. I have advantage too. And it strikes, and you see this goblin drop. That's what I wanted. And then you hear, but <clears throat> basically Dang. behind you here. And in the trees around you, you hear footsteps and scattering. And that's where it went. I got, I got initiative. Look at that, 25. Rat nat 20, bro. Nice. All right, so then here, let me put this in order. And Cody's got to roll his. Yep, we'll just do that when we get back. All right, Cody so just came back. that is where we will slam a jam it.